If you're one of those people that falls asleep as soon as your head hits the pillow, then I'm jealous and good for you. This video is not for you. If you're more like me and you could lie awake, possibly for hours, thinking about what you need to do, contemplating life, then listen up. You might find some useful ideas in this video. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to talk about some of the things that's helped me fall asleep more quickly and more easily. As we go through each of these, I'm gonna talk about what they are, why it works, and my experience with it. If you're like me, I can be a bit of an overthinker. I'll be lying awake in bed, my mind will be racing. Sometimes I'll be dead tired, but my mind will be so awake that I just can't get to sleep. So I've been always searching for ways to try and help me get to sleep more quickly and more easily. There's so many things on my mind that's always coming up. I think this is the modern day fight or flight mode that can be very hard to get out of. We're purely focused on falling asleep and getting to sleep in the first place, relaxing and unwinding our mind so we can get to sleep. There are too many aspects to cover in this video, but if you're interested, let me know in the comments below and maybe we can cover that in a future video. Some of these sleep problems might be coming from being stuck at home a lot in recent times. If that's the case, then check out my other video, you might find some useful ideas there. Alright, so let's get into the details. In no particular order, the first one is the brain dump. That is, getting everything out of your brain. You don't want it to be sitting there swirling around. You want to get it out of your brain, and there are two key ways you can go about doing this. The first one is to write it down, write it down, and write it down. No matter how big or how small it can be, get that shit down. And I do mean every little thing that you are thinking about. Your brain is like a computer with a browser and a hundred different tabs open. Every thought that you have that you need to do is an open tab on this computer. In order to shut down your computer, you must close each of these tabs first. These are the unresolved questions or the open loops in your mind. You have to get this all down and out of your mind. Your brain is terrible at storing things. So when you have all these thoughts on your mind and things you need to do, you're just gonna keep cycling through them over and over again. You need to get them down so it's out of your mind. You can use sticky notes or a notebook. Try and avoid using your phone to write it down so you can avoid looking at the screen. This will be helpful as well. What you need is one central area that you know you can go back to to find your thoughts and your notes that you've written down. You don't want it to be on scraps of paper that you might lose that will make you even more stressed out. I've definitely had times where something very small has kept me awake. It was nothing big, nothing important. It was just there and it just kept going through my head and I was just too lazy to write it down. Don't let this happen to you. Whatever thoughts you have, whatever things you need to do, write it down first. And this brings us to number two, which is journaling. This is another excellent way to get things out of your head. In contrast to just writing lists of things you need to do, this might be the less concrete and less tangible things that you might have swirling around in your head. This is a stream of consciousness. This is just a flow of thoughts that you have on your mind. It's also important to get these thoughts down too. And like listing things out by journaling, the act of writing something down acts to free your mind. So when you journal, it can just be a stream of consciousness. It's a free flow of whatever you're thinking about. Nothing needs to flow. It doesn't even need to be complete sentences. It's just a way of getting thoughts that are in your head onto a piece of paper. So what I think of the brain dump, the, the writing down things and the journaling. I personally, I'd rate this five out of five. To me, this has been hugely helpful. Maybe I have a lot of thoughts. By getting them down, I no longer have to endlessly cycle through them in my mind. Every new thought that comes up, I try to get down on a piece of paper. I know it's there, I can go and sort it out and process it the next day. It helps me relax and get to sleep much easier. So five out of five for this one. Okay, so the second category is to occupy your mind. This might come in the form of listening to music, or reading a book. Again, try and read a real physical book rather than reading off a screen, or you could listen to an audio book. How does this work? Because it shifts your focus onto something else, and in some ways, it's drowning out your other thoughts. It's giving you something different to focus on. We've all heard about counting sheep or counting backwards from a million. This is all about shifting your focus. It's just an extension of that idea. There was a period of time back in the day where I used to put on some Avicii to help me fall asleep. Some people might find that weird, but for some reason, it just worked for me, so, you know, whatever works, right? Some people might want to listen to a documentary or other people might want to listen to some sort of lecture because that seems to be a surefire way of helping you fall asleep. You just have to find what sort of material works for you. But a very important point here is that it cannot be turning your brain on. What I mean by that is you can't be listening to non-fiction. A lot of the times you start thinking and reflecting and analyzing things and that's the opposite of what you want. Ideally, it will be some sort of fiction, some sort of story that will turn on your imagination. This triggers your visual cortex, which is what's active when you're dreaming. So essentially, you're helping your brain shift into the dreamlike state and making it easier for you to fall asleep. So the content of what you're reading, what you're listening to really matters. 
Right now I'm listening to the Harry Potter audiobooks, I've forgotten how great they were, and a lot of the times I've fallen asleep before the chapter's even finished. So what do I think of this category? I think I'd rate this a 4 out of 5, because it's very good, but you can't just do it by itself. If you haven't done a brain dump and gotten all your thoughts out, it can be quite easy to slip back into that thinking mode. So you want to do that first before you do this one, and it'll make it more effective. So the next one is getting out of your head and into your body. This could be doing yoga, doing some mindfulness or meditation, doing breath work, or taking a hot shower. It might be easy to dismiss, but getting your body into that relaxed and restful state is very helpful to falling asleep more quickly. These activities help you turn off your analytical mind and turn your mind to the present, what's happening around you. When you're more present, it helps you connect more with your body. Or more scientifically speaking, you're helping to activate your parasympathetic para 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 system, which is your rest and digest system, in contrast to your sympathetic nervous system, which is more about the fight or flight. Once you've shifted into a more parasympathetic state, it will be easier for you to relax and wind down. And if you have those shower thoughts, don't forget to write them down. I mentioned breath work, and this is a cycle of breathing in, holding, and then breathing out. Why this works and how it moves you into a more relaxed state, breathing is a direct response to fight or flight mode. Like think about it, when you're fearful, when you're scared, when you're nervous, when you're anxious, you're naturally gonna be breathing more quickly and in a shallow way. But when you're relaxed, you're taking long and deep breaths. And this is your body naturally responding to what is required. So if you're doing these breathing exercises, you're telling your body there's no need to fight, it's okay to relax. So what is this breathing exercise I'm talking about? It's something called the 478 breath. So that means breathing in for a count of four. Holding for a count of seven. And breathing out for a count of eight. Should have probably thought that out. If you do that for a few minutes, you'll feel your body shifting into a more relaxed state. So what rating would I give this category? I think I'm gonna give this one a three out of five. By itself alone, it's not quite as effective as some of the other things we've talked about. But of course, if you combine it with the other ones, it's very, very handy to have. All right, so the next category is removing stimulation. And this is again, trying to help your body shift into a more relaxed state. This is about what can be physically stimulating as well as what's mentally stimulating. So physically, you don't wanna be doing exercise right before bed. You don't wanna be doing things that might be getting your heart rate up. And at the same time, mentally, you don't want to be doing things that might be stressing you out and causing you anxiety. The reason this works is the same as the previous category because when you are stimulated, both physically and or mentally, your body is in fight or flight mode. It is not relaxed and it's hard for you to fall asleep. So things you can do include turning off your phone before bed. I like to turn my phone off or put it on airplane mode before I go take a shower. So that way I won't see messages that might get me thinking, especially work emails that might trigger me. This might also mean having potentially stressful conversations with friends or your family or other people and just doing something calm and relaxing. It's also a good idea to remove clocks from the bedroom so you can't see what time it is. Often you can get anxious because it's late and you're not falling asleep and the more you think about it, the harder it is to fall asleep and then it's just this downward spiral. If nothing's working, you can always get up, go do something else and come back and try again later. So what rating would I give this category? I think I'd give this a four out of five. Avoiding things that might stimulate you physically or mentally goes a long way to helping you fall asleep more quickly. So I think being able to unwind to relax and fall asleep is like a muscle or, or like an anti-muscle. The more you use it and the better you get, the easier it will become. But unlike a muscle, it's not about how hard you're trying. It's the exact opposite. The harder you try, the harder it will be to fall asleep. It's one of those things that the harder you don't try, the easier it will be. Whatever the opposite of effort is. I think I'd love to be able to instantly switch off if that was possible. Or have that pensive in Harry Potter that Dumbledore uses. You extract the thoughts from your head and you just dump it in this well and you can forget about it. Sometimes falling asleep can be very tough, but now we have a few tools in our arsenal that we can use to give us a better chance of getting to sleep more quickly. But what if you fall asleep, but later you wake up in the middle of the night? Maybe that can be a future video. Right now, I'm just gonna go to bed and just hope for the best that I don't wake up until the morning. So see you in the next one. Who wears their mic to bed? <laughs>